and welcome to this episode of Disrepair. Today I'm sharing part one of our long-term build series on one of our favorite projects, Swede for Speed, our 1967 P1800 Volvo with dual electric motors. Volvo, a Swedish car company known for safety over sex appeal, practicality over pleasure, and boxy over beauty. Volvo, yes Volvo, known for the stylistic design features of a brick, also created the P1800. The P1800, which is such a departure that if you remove the badges and parked it directly in front of an Ikea, people still wouldn't know the origin of this car. I know this because I ran an online poll with the grill and badges removed and most people guessed it was an Aston Martin. So it almost goes without saying, this is the finest looking car that Volvo ever marketed. Despite being a beauty, it wasn't much of a beast, so we're going to add 350 foot-pounds of EV power. It's not out of the peg hole, is no, it's it? Not. Did we get the nut off of it? No, for what? Yeah, I did. I took okay. it off. Yeah, you don't have to drain the crap out of them. Yeah, they just keep. Hold on. We just need uh, to disconnect this. Think outside of that. Uh, to the rear. Dude, that shifter's freaking tail shaft is so insanely long, bro. There you go. It's out. Don't worry, I'm uh, I'm gonna do some kind of new montage song over the top of all this. I must say I'm pretty impressed. The Volvo actually has a very modern suspension. Check out the four link and the panard bar. This thing doesn't even need the suspension upgraded in the rear, other than heavier springs to carry the batteries. So here we go, we're replacing the original engine with dual Hyper 9 motors. In order to do that, we had to custom fabricate mounting plates, which stacked both motors on top of each other vertically. We also made adapter rings and couplers. The end result allows us to use a belt drive system that couples these two motors together to make around 350 foot-pounds of torque. Now this setup is gonna be a direct drive, so that means no transmission. Get in the tunnel. Yeah. yeah, you guys can go sideways. Sideways. This is how I get the motor out of the Brad as I turn it sideways. Support right. I mean, once we get the chass past that, we can slide it here, you know, like this. Okay. All right, hold on. Yep, like this. Right, there we go. Now we want to go back as far as we go. Oh, as far well, that, that thing on the top of it's kind of. Okay. Oh, look, look, okay. We can go a little further back. You want as far back as possible. Do you want me to go up some? Yeah, go up and we'll, we'll push the whole uh, hoist back. Okay. Like that. Yep. There we go. That is probably a bit there. That's probably as far back as we can go. Okay. Down? No, no, it's right. Right there. Right there. Okay. There we Stop. go. There we okay. go. That's yep. better. Yeah, that's plenty yep. of room up here. That it's going to be like good. that, yeah. Yeah. Because this is the first ever installation of dual Hyper 9s in a Volvo, we had to custom fabricate motor mounts. To do this, we purchased four generic motor mounts and put two on either side, which stabilized the motors and reduced chassis vibration. The finishing touch will be hand fabricated engine panels that serve to not only spruce up the engine compartment, but also hide components and then cut this out and make a brace underneath it that will hold them. Like just a floating flat strap that comes down and under that will bolt those to them and do it on both sides. And then 
and then I'll remake a panel like this that goes over the whole front that has the same indention with the with the holes in it and everything, right? Like that. Because ideally I had it, if these controllers were going this way, this was gonna sit under and, you know, but now I can make it step this way and I'll cut a notch out and it'll also be a, a finger guard for the pulleys. Nice. Biggest thing, right, that we're gonna run into is- So what are you trying to put in there? Is, mind you, I can notch Control here, this. James, yeah, if you got a cover, then yeah, you can notch on the corners. And so. Those are what comes up for our most positive, most negative yeah. into those. And we're never actually crossing over the, what do you call it? Uh, the, um, only, the only other gotcha is the, that big K1 plug, you know? Is there vertically enough room for the K1 plug with this thing here? We would just, just have need this. an opening here where the cables, yeah, the, yeah, the and then six we could, big we cables. We can notch here and here still, yeah. come up, up. Yeah, so six big cables come here. We need to 3D print a 90 head for this stupid freaking controller. I'm sure we can. Well, now that we have a game plan, we need to pull this all back apart so we can get that chassis up on the rotisserie so we can strip off all the undercoating and get it ready for paint. Whoever was the undercoater at the Volvo factory must have got paid by the pound because every square inch of this car is covered with rubberized undercoating. It required the use of air nibblers, air scrapers, and tons of elbow grease just to get down to the primer and paint the underside of this car. By the way, don't forget to wear your ear protection when you're doing work like this because this happens to be the most annoying sound in the world. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> Luckily, this car wasn't too bad. It had very few rust holes that we discovered. Every once in a while, you'd find a few pinholes in the floorboard. At the customer's request, we tried something novel on this car using laser blasting. You know, I have one simple request, and that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. So did we like the laser blasting? Well, of course, who doesn't like using lasers? It did leave the metal clean and didn't make much of a mess, but if we had to do it over again, we'd probably just say, let's just use a more traditional style of media. Once in bare metal, we laid down a fresh coat of epoxy primer to seal it off. After all the blasting was done, we started spraying components, including the trunk and the engine compartment. Those custom-made panels really look nice, and those controllers mounted perfectly. Now it's time to start on that exterior First thing we had to do was get Tyvexed up and start removing that old white paint and layers and layers of Bondo. Yes! Come on! Ah! Yes! Yes! Like all old cars, there's always some hidden treasures. In this case, it's a tail pan. This thing was wasted, so we called Sweden and ordered up a new tail pan. Well, now that we can replace that panel, we need to start cutting away the old panel. So we gathered up a variety of cutting tools and started cutting it away. Now that that's done, it's off to paint and body. We're actually starting on the paint and body right now. The first step was to get the car into the booth and get off all that surface rust that might have accumulated just from sitting. As you can see, I've already stripped all the paint. 
all that old white paint it had like 10 layers on it. I put a nice coat of epoxy on it. And uh, this is what I would lay down just to start body work. As you can see, body's not too bad on this thing, pretty straight. Hopefully this won't be too much of a struggle. I did have to put a new rear tail pan on it. But uh, overall, yeah, we're ready to go. Now there's two trim packages the P1800 came with, and there's this one that runs up and kind of goes along here and up like that. Or there's one that just goes straight down the side. So uh, we're gonna weld up all these holes because the owner wants to have that straight piece, which I think looks better on these cars anyway. It's just, gives it more sleek look. So that's first step number one. All welded up, all the holes are welded up. Now another area of concern was in the window channels. Now when I removed the glass, I found a few spots that had rusted through. So we wanna make sure and cut those out, kill all the rust and weld some patches in there. Now another thing we had to repair before I finished metal work was the cutout for the rear exhaust. We won't be needing that anymore. We also did some miscellaneous repairs to the quarter panel where the metal was getting a little thin. Now we're ready to start body work. First thing I did was coat it with a coat of super build polyester high build primer. This gives you a good base to work from to start your body work. Now it's time to start sanding with 80 grit. And after hours of block sanding later, we are ready for final prime. This may not be much to look at for you, but it does look good to me. It is ready for final prime, this whole side, all the way to the edge of this fender right here. For the next stage, I used a different primer. It's called fill and sand. It's a thinner product, but it's also polyester. The gaps are looking nice. The body's looking pretty straight. But guess what that means? More block sanding. I've been really focused on the outside of the body, but we also got to prep the insides of the panels to get those ready for paint. So I recruited some help. After hours and hours of prep work, we're finally ready to start masking. We're gonna do the jams of this car first, and we're gonna paint the car digital blue metallic. The reason I'm doing the jams first is I wanna paint the entire outside of the car in one shot, so there's no problem with panel mismatch. It's almost time for paint, but first we need to clean it. We use wax and grease remover to wipe the entire body down, and I also use an air blower to blow out any little dust specks or anything like that that could possibly creep out from any of the leftover residue from sanding. All right, big day today. We got this thing all jammed out, got all the panels back on. All we gotta do is just wrap it up, get it ready to spray, so here we go. One more step before painting, I lay down a coat of sealer. This provides a uniform surface for the blue paint to go on top of. After a base coat application, I applied several coats of clear to give that car that deep shine look and started reinstalling all the chrome pieces and accessories, starting to look like a car again. Now the car is off to upholstery, where it'll make its next stop on its journey to become the first dual Hyper 9 P1800 EV Volvo. I really appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you can see part two and the finale of us finishing the P1800 EV conversion.